Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over my workspace and I'm also going to be covering the selection tool, the direct select tool and also some of the features of the pen tool itself. We'll get started by, well, in fact we'll get started on the workspace first. So to start off with, on my first tab at the top I've got colour, gradient, colour guide, swatches and stroke. Uh, second tab, character, paragraph, transform and brushes. Third tab, I have pathfinder and a line and then my last tab is my layers tab which I don't actually see quite a lot of people using which is weird but that's just preference I suppose. Um, so just to run through why I've got them where they are, um, the top tab is basically all of my colour tools that I'll need. Um, gradients, colour guide which is actually pretty helpful. Um, for example, complementary colours, so let's say you've got a fill, let's put it as purple, and go to your colour guide, it'll give you your complementary colours, which is basically the opposite colour on the colour wheel, um, and obviously you can look through these and find different combinations and different, just different ones that you can obviously find and use, so have a look through them. You've got your swatches, which you can also have a look through if you go down to sw open swatch library, you have to click on this here at the top right, go down to swatch library, you can click on a random one, stretch the box out and then with these two little arrows at the bottom here you can switch through all of the different swatches and there's countless ones that are there by default so you can go through those. Um, the stroke, this is more to do with lines obviously but um, so with the stroke you can play with the caps which is the ends of them. As you can see on this one, I've actually had to put a custom cap on it so it fit with this. Um, originally it was like that, and then as you can see, if I align that to this, you can see that it overlaps. So doing that actually puts it at the end of it so it aligns correctly. Um, you also have the rounded cap as well, which just rounds the edge for you. <laughs> and you can also play with this as well, the uh, dashed lines. So if, say if you wanted it to be like, on a, say you wanted to cut something out, you wanted to print that onto a piece of paper, like where to cut, you can have cutting lines, or you can use it for part of a design, which I've done several times, you might have seen. Uh, let me take that off. Then down to the second tab, I've got, let me just make this smaller. My character tab, which by default may be this. Yours may look like this, but if you click on the options at the top right and click on to show options, you'll get the extra settings there that you can look around with. If you know what you're doing with these, then of course use them. But if you don't, then it may be best to just leave them. Um, then across to paragraph, again, just more tools that you can use for like type layout. And again, obviously you've got this options, so you can adjust, you can uh, expand that down, see more options. Transform, I'll be honest with you, I've only got this here because of this. If I take it out, make a shape, it pops up on the screen, which personally I can't deal with, so I just threw it in this one, just randomly. Um, brushes, I don't really use this. The only time I do use this is for when I'm um, using my tablet um, for like lettering and whatnot, so that's not really uh, something that I need there, but it's there. Uh, then down to my third tab, go down to Pathfinder, um, and these two here are probably the things that I use the most in uh, Illustrator when I'm making, a, say, a logo or something. They are used quite a lot. Um, then a line is. I only really use this, you can use it for type and you can actually use it for shapes etc but I personally just use this for putting my guides in the centre of the document at the start which I'll show you shortly. And then obviously the last tab is just my layers tab. Right now to the actual document. To um, open up your guides you want to press command R if you're on a um, PC it'll be control R. and then. You want to click onto the ruler bit at the side and drag out, which will give you your guides. And do the same for the top so you've got them both. And then obviously if you want them in the centre, 
what you can do is you can go to align and then by default yours will probably probably look like this but then you can click on show options which extends it down what you're going to do is click on this and then click on align to artboard once that's set to align to artboard all you have to press is this middle one here horizontal align center and then vertical align center which is the middle one on here as well which will then put them into the center of the document which is what I actually have done already in a different document not a different document, a different layer, sorry. This is personally how I prefer to do it. Um, I put the guides all into one layer and then I lock it and then I can basically turn it on and off from here like this. So that's why I have mine there. It's just, I personally find it easier. Right, so now let's focus on the, um, the selection tool and the direct selection tool. So the selection tool is basically what it says. It's a selection tool. You can select any object that isn't locked and you can move it around like this obviously holding shift keeps it aligned so that's that <laughs> it's not really much you can say about that tool um, and then the direct select tool is basically where you can if you click onto a shape like this and then you click onto a point you can move it about just that that one particular anchor point rather than moving the whole shape around Um, but obviously this comes in handy when you need to adjust something for like a logo or anything. <laughs> um, and then you also have on the direct select tool, um, this feature, I think this may have been added with Ad um, Adobe Creative Cloud, I don't think it was on CC, um, no, on CS6 sorry, but it's out on S Adobe CC. So anyway, um, it's these little circles here and if you click and drag those, it basically just rounds off all the corners for you but so something like that could be used fairly well for a logo like a more simplistic style line based logo you can make countless different things from using these sort of just simple basic techniques and then for the last one this one involves using the pencil but um, just when it select whatever shape you want to add, a, add an anchor point to um, so in this case I'm getting a square and I want to put an, I want to add an anchor point in the center at the top so make sure it's selected and you'll see a little plus next to the cursor and then just click onto that point go back to your direct selection tool and then you can now adjust this point so by holding shift I'm dragging it straight down so now you've got that weird like M shape which you could potentially turn into something like uh, an envelope obviously it needs some fixing up but that's the basic <laughs> what you can do as well once you have this here you can go to the pen to uh, go to the pen tool right, hold down onto it which will bring up this little menu and then click onto the anchor point tool at the bottom this is when you click onto this anchor point now and then you drag you'll see that it curves if you hold shift it'll keep the um, handles straight so if I pull this straight out here Obviously now you've got a curve rather than a point. If you want to go back and then delete that point, say you made a mistake or you've got a light, you've got a point somewhere that you don't want it, you can to the pen tool. You don't have to go on that particular one, you can just literally press P on your keyboard so you've got the pen tool. Um, then click go hover over the point that you want to remove and then literally just click on it and it will remove the point for you. If you go to the direct select tool, you can actually adjust these handles. So, from here now I can make that shape even more weird. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, I hope this has helped you out and um, I'm hoping to do more tutorials in the future but gradually build off this one and get more and more advanced so you'll have to bear with me in the meantime if you're a bit more advanced than the sort of stuff I'm showing at the moment but this is literally for the beginners and I'm going to build up 